It's a strawberry mug kind of day. So my studio still isn't done. Lace eye. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Lies, of course I want to talk about it. This is me, I want to talk about everything. Uh, but for now, suffice it to say that my brain has been all sorts of crunchy and buzzy and melty and more layered than the most complex parfait you've ever eaten for the last several weeks. And I really want to pause and take a deep breath and do something fun and easy and um, <laughs> accomplishable within a few days. I need to finish something and enjoy it. Enjoy both the making of it and the finishing of it. Look at this massive mess you have made on my floor. Are you so proud of your massive mess? Did you do hard work? What happened in here? I've got a backlog of dress designs just floating around in the brain parfait. Nothing all that fancy, just stuff I wanna make. So I thought I would whip out one of those, um, bits of granola. What goes in a parfait? <laughs> I haven't had a parfait since I was a kid because adulthood has left me just lactose intolerant enough that I can't eat yogurt anymore. Last week on the channel, I decided it would be super fun to hand sew a dress. <laughs> Didn't really think that one through. Not that it was a bad idea or it didn't work or anything. It's just that I was already dealing with a super slow project that's been putting me behind on my beloved to me, but actually not that important schedule. So layering another molasses paste project on top of it, uh, it was nice to do it, but it didn't really help with the brain slog. So this time I will be using the machine and I'll be doing something super simple and I'll be chatting a lot about my mental state. Aren't we excited? So here's the plan. I found this super fun elastic. Can you guess where I found it? That's right, remainders, <laughs> every time. I want to use it as the waistband on a dress. Like, just the whole middle section like that. So the skirt and the bodice should be able to just gather into this and the whole thing should be able to easily stretch on and off. I'm thinking a light and breezy fabric, though it does need to at least coordinate with black and white. A circle skirt, naturally. Side seam pockets, naturally. And then just a simple bodice, maybe with a dropped shoulder, and for a little bit of extra funsies, I thought I would do a different neckline on each side so that the dress is reversible. I am still debating between boat, crew, V, and scoop, but maybe the fabric will help me decide, so I should probably decide on fabric. My fabric abides here still. A bed, abides a bed. Good thing we don't have guests. Oh, y'all. Gazing upon the fabric mountain just makes me so excited to make stuff. I want to make so much stuff, which in turn makes me long for my studio. Okay, let's scavenge. Light and breezy, black and white coordinating. Should I just do it black? A little black dress? That's a possibility. Ooh. <laughs> Hoy all, I cannot wait to get this organized. <laughs> After all that, we are going LBT. <laughs> Yay! Of course, the second I started looking closer at the elastic, I realized it's wider than I had remembered, and then I started getting different ideas for the top and making it all just a teensy bit more complex, cause you know how I do. How have I made this many circle skirts? And I've just completely forgotten what the formula is. Circumference by pi? 
right? Right? Oh, that seems right. Circumference divided by pi. <laughs> divided by two. So I'm gonna wait on that and start with the skirt. Who you need to be ironed. Easy peasy, full circle in two pieces with the waistband sized to my hips so that I can, you know, get it on. God, y'all. Every time. No concept of where my arms are. Skirt. Skirt, skirt. No. Pockets. Pockets. Bodice. Back to the bodice. Since the elastic sits right under the bust, I think I'm gonna try sort of a deep V neckline, which might ruin the reversible thing, but oh well, this is fun. It's the definition of dead end. Spin. Okay, I'm gonna go get all of my joints cracked so that I can keep treating them terribly. <laughs> but then we're back to this. Okay, now that my body has been adjusted, Let's chat about my brain. <laughs> While I put together the skirt, cause I'm still not entirely sure what I'm doing with the bodice. It's a little iffy. <sighs> okay, see, this is one of the things that I miss is my desk that's open on the other side so I can film myself. This is not a good setup. We're moving. Come with me. Ah. Perfection. I see no potential problems with this. So yeah, like I said, my brain's been all sorts of fun this past month because yes, it has now been a whole month since I finished painting my studio and I have not yet managed to finish putting on the baseboards and the trim and everything so I can move everything back in there. And I've been super bothered and unfocused and like, weird, which is my go-to word for when things just aren't really feeling right internally, rather than jumping straight to what's typically a more negative connotation of like stressed, depressed, or bad. I just like to identify it as weird first. Oh, I'm feeling a little weird today. Why is that? I finally had to give myself a very thorough talking to, uh, literally out loud talking, because if you, like me, have multitudinous voices in your head, like many, many layers of thought just going on all at the same time, all the time, then talking out loud is often the only way to really hear yourself. Writing stuff down is good too. And when I talk through an issue out loud, I can then start to suss out what's behind that issue, what's the root of it. Because of course the thing that you're obsessing or stressing over is quite often built up on another unaddressed issue, which is then built on top of another unaddressed issue, and so on. Oh, this shakes. So when you finally get to the foundational thing that's elevating everything else, quite often it's something that you weren't even aware of, or maybe you just weren't acknowledging to yourself. And when you do finally acknowledge that thing, it can really help to kind of crumble those layers up above it. Am I doing this right? Who's to say? I realize I'm starting to sound like a psychology class now. Um, I've never actually taken a psychology class. This is just my personal experience. <laughs> so. My top issue, the thing that was the loudest in my brain, was my schedule, my posting schedule here. And what's, what's kind of hilarious is that it's not even that I was afraid that I wouldn't meet deadlines or I wouldn't have anything to post one Friday. I film all of my videos a month in advance specifically for times like this so that if something is delayed or it's just taking longer than I expected, I will not end up having a down week in posting. I can have plenty of time to make up for that. What was bothering me or annoying me was just that I was having to delay certain projects that I wanted to get done sooner than I will now be able to get them done. But like, it doesn't matter to anyone. I will still do these projects. They are still next on my list. It'll all be fine. But I had just 
decided that this very specific schedule that I had made was incredibly, incredibly important, even though it absolutely was not and is not. And that is where it's like, hmm. I'm not usually that picky with my schedule. I'm usually pretty open to switching stuff up or to inserting some random project that I wanted to do all of a sudden. Already out of thread. And that is where the next layer of like, hey, what's bothering you comes into play. Like there is something below the schedule that is weirding you out and making you weird out even more about something that would not normally weird you out so much. Apologies if that made absolutely no sense. But yeah, so underneath the concerns about my schedule, there was the displacement, I guess? The fact that my personal space for work is not available to me right now, which is like fine, right? It's fine. I have so much other space to work in, it is all fine, but it does just mess with my brain in a way that I don't always take the time to acknowledge. There's a similar underlying feeling when I've been traveling for a while or visiting family. This need to be back in the proper, familiar place for the things that you are doing just kind of simmers there under the surface. Uh, well, I don't like that. And then below that, I've got the unfinished project. Oh baby, that's a big one for me. Like I've talked about before, I really struggle with being in the middle of a project and not being able to finish it right now. Even stopping a project for the night or for lunch or just to go to the bathroom requires me to insert what we could call a checkpoint. Like you're not fully done with the project, but you've completed the current task. So now you may go sleep, eat, or pee. And my studio project has been in midland <laughs> for a month now. Even worse, all of my tasks within the project are also currently at midpoints. Like not a single thing is fully finished at this time. And y'all, it's distracting to put it in the best term possible. <laughs> Hello, my precious. What a little angel baby. I love you so much. But surprisingly, perhaps, that is still not the foundational issue in my current stress stack. Ultimately, the foundation that I have to frequently remind myself to acknowledge and give myself grace because of is barely seeing my partner for over a month now. I'm a homebody, I'm a hermit. We've talked about it many times now. I don't leave the house or interact with human beings IRL very much. So Matt is really my main source of human interaction on top of being like, you know, my chosen person, the one that I love and all that mushy stuff. I don't love what this is doing, but okay. No. Hello, good scritchy scratchies. And when he's this busy, it's not just that I don't see him, we don't really get to talk at all. We basically shoot each other a few texts a day that are like, I love you, I miss you, you're awesome, you can do it. So yeah, his absence does have a major effect on me. And yeah, you wanna leave? Now you're gonna stay. I stay busy, I do what I love here. And I don't often think about it, but this time it is, definitely very particularly feeding all of those layers above it. And talking through all of this stuff out loud with myself a few days ago really did help. After identifying all of this, I could start from the top and do what I can to alleviate. And that is when I decided to make this dress and film this video. Because why on earth am I taking something that I'm excited about, an upcoming project that I am super duper looking forward to doing and turning it into something stressful because now I'm gonna have to wait another week or two 
before I can actually do it. Why am I stressing about getting my studio done when I could just keep doing projects in my living room and wait until Matt is back to help me with things that could really use a second pair of hands? It helped a lot. I have felt so much better since then, and I got really excited about making this dress that I've been thinking about for a while. And honestly, I was just excited to talk about all of this with you and share a bit. If your parfait brain is getting too crunchy, I feel you, I see you, I hear you. We will 100% be okay. And for those of you who wondered how I managed to talk and work at the same time, I work much slower. I've only gotten one pocket done. <laughs> Let me get the other pocket done. And then I think it's dinner time. We're back to facing the wall because that rolly table at the couch shakes like a chihuahua if you go more than snail speed on the machine. Someone asked before what that table is. This one here is actually Matt's sound engineer desk, like it's built specifically for that. Um, it's just too heavy for us to move it into the small room where his temporary studio is. So we plonked it here. And then the one we have by the couch is the keyboard bench that came with it. It has been very handy as a rolling coffee table. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and hem the skirt before sewing it onto the waistband elastic and I'm trying bias tape hemming for, weirdly enough, the first time ever. Honestly, I usually just don't care enough about my hems to spend this much time on them, but with a circle skirt, bias tape hemming is really one of the cleanest and nicest options. Ah! I tried a couple different ways of stitching the skirt onto the elastic and finally discovered that gathering it first, sewing it on with a zigzag stitch, and then pulling out the gathering stitches worked best. It's really dark, sorry. But yay, skirt path is done. <laughs> Those are such big jumps. Such big jumps. Now I'm tempted to leave it as a skirt because oh my goodness, I love it like this. But we press on with the bodice. By the way, I think it's scientifically impossible not to smile while watching Mamma Mia. Are you freaking out? Yeah. No, that can't be right. Okay. Also, Matt came home, yay! It became evident pretty quickly that what I had cut out was not gonna work the way that I wanted it to work, so I basically futzed around and tried my best to turn it into something else that can work in a different way, but even that wasn't really working in the end. So, um, yeah, tomorrow morning, we start over on the bodice, Wee! Do you ever completely without warning become acutely aware of every single hair touching the back of your neck? This stuff is everyday occurrences for me. So, you know, I've trained myself to not get distracted by it, but the awareness doesn't go away. It stays there as long as it feels like staying there. So then you're just trying to carry on with your tasks and with your life with this added layer in your brain. It always reminds me of those like undercover scenes in movies and stuff where someone has an earpiece in but then the person who's on the other side of the earpiece like talks too much or gets distracted with something starts having a conversation with somebody else so then the person is trying to like stay undercover but they have this voice talking in their ear the whole time. Multiply 
that voice by like 5 to 15. And that is what life is like every day for me and probably a whole bunch of other people. At all times, unstoppingly. Let's try to make a bodice that actually works. <laughs> I was overcomplicating it as I tend to do. I think this dress should be simple though. It's pretty and swooshy and lovely because it's simple. So I almost overcomplicated it again with this whole like shoulder tie idea, but I stopped myself. We are doing a simple dolmen dropped shoulder gathered bodice like I originally said. which made the construction rather simple. Just a few French seams, some hemming, and then I gathered it and sewed it onto the elastic just like I did with the skirt. Let's see the final product. Oh, a chest? Okay, it's like you're too pale to be wearing black. Dost thou hear the wind? Because the wind would very much like to be heard. Okay, right by the fireplace is probably not the best place to talk when the wind has decided to be a little drama queen. <laughs> oh well, we're going with it. Y'all, I love how this turned out. I don't think I've ever made myself just like a normal day wear black dress. I mean, this is still a little nice. I still wouldn't just like, I might wear it around the house. It's really comfortable, <laughs> but I'd call it like a wear it out to dinner kind of dress. I feel like I'm still very washed out here. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, this whole waistband kind of thing is so nice because it's like, I don't know if Spanx were comfortable. Like I enjoy the feeling of a piece of clothing being tight up against me, but not like <clears throat> tight. And this is what that is. It like hugs you, but it doesn't squeeze you. And then the rest of it is just a big old bucket of swoosh, so. Y'all know how I feel about swoosh. Yeah, I'm so glad I made this. I'm so glad I took the time. There's a lot of just sort of simpler dress designs that I have in my head. And because they're not like projects, they don't really feel like this whole project thing. It's just like, you should make that at some point. They tend to not get added onto the list as much, but I definitely want to start like throwing one of those in every seven or eight projects. I don't know, throwing them in more often so I can actually make the dresses that I'm imagining in my head that are maybe really simple, but also just delightful. And to wrap up my brain related chat. Hello, you wanna be here for this too? What's right here? Nothing, it's just my finger, I tricked you. I think often we feel like we shouldn't be bothered by something that is bothering us. I shouldn't be bothered by not having my studio space because I have this whole living room to work in. I shouldn't be bothered by not seeing my partner for a while because I'm a strong independent woman who loves to be alone. There is so often an inner voice, or in some cases for you, it might be an outer voice, it might literally be somebody telling you this, that says you shouldn't be bothered by that. It's petty, it's silly, it's unimportant. You're above such things. Or a big one for me is, um, that's not logical. So then we just pretend we aren't bothered and ignore it completely. And that does not help at all, does it? We can't find solutions for something and move through something if we are pretending it doesn't exist. So it's really just necessary to acknowledge and accept that something is bothering you regardless of how you feel 
about the fact that it's bothering you, right? We just have to acknowledge those things, even if it makes us feel silly to do so. It took me a couple weeks this time, but I am so glad that I sat down and talked myself through this one, because in the end, I got to make this fabulous dress, and I got to share something with you guys that I think is important, and I got an extra week to work on my studio somewhat stress-free. It is a win-win-win. Thanks for being here. Do you ever, without warning, <laughs> Are you here to investigate the sneeze? Let me wait for the wind to have its moment. Ah. Why is it so dark in here? Why? Ooh! Oh God, I'm old. Why don't I stop filming between these places? But no people can. Doopity doop boop be doop boop boo doo. Have fun editing that.